we start readily with the first presentation, technology application uh, selection, a framework for technology push innovation. It's gonna be held by Despinan Takiaku from Entechnon. She holds a, a, a dipple inch degree in mechanical industry uh, engineering with a specialization in industrial management. And she works as a research uh, associate at Entechnon of KAT, where she's coaching uh, master students, executive, startups, and also researchers, mainly in the topic of technology driven innovation. And Entechnon is the Institute for Entrepreneurship, Technology Management, and Innovation at KIT which follows the goal of enabling people to act as responsible entrepreneurs. Despina, thanks a lot for being with us today. And I, I pass on the word to you uh, to hold your talk. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me. Good morning to the people in Chile. It's earlier there. Um, I would like to start uh, with my presentation. I will share my screen. And uh, you will let me know if you can actually see it. Okay. Yes, we see you. Okay, great. So I can start. So today's uh, presentation actually uh, deals with the question how to best support technology entrepreneurs to discover and develop opportunities based on inventions and technological progress and focuses specifically on TAS, on technology application selection, as we call it, an approach for the identification of technology-based opportunities. So uh, I want to uh, let you know that you can interrupt me actually at any time if you have any questions, but I know that we have a um, discussion planned after this so there will be time if you want me to go deeper in any of the steps we offer uh, workshops at the Antechnon following this uh, framework that I will show you today for uh, researchers uh, or start in real life and let me start with a historical example which would make the motivation for this presentation more clear hopefully so it was in 1917, that Albert Einstein established the theoretical foundations for the laser, but it was not until the 1960s, so more than 40 years later, that the laser was a novel technology looking for its applications. And since then, the process of identifying potential applications for an invention, so for a new technological invention, uh, became a crucial challenge for research institutions, for companies. And as you all know, uh, lasers are today used in almost all areas of science, in medicine, um, even also art and entertainment. And this is actually because the scientific progress has created a whole new range of opportunities. And nowadays, um, technological advances are seen in general as vital drivers for economic development and growth. And for that reason, there is a sustained interest in the field of technology entrepreneurship among policymakers, uh, industry, and of course, um, research. So this is the framework as a whole, the TES framework that um, I'm talking about today. And it was developed at the Antechnon Institute and it can actually be used as a step-by-step -step guide on implementing technology push, the technology push process in different workshop formats and settings. And the consolidated and unified framework that you see uh, right now in your screens is based on a model published by Tatsidis and Vogel in 2016. And it builds on a systematic literature review. So the steps that you see here, the blue ones uh, being the technology advancement activities and the green ones being the supporting management activities. It's not something, of course, we came up with. Um, but uh, after conducting the systematic literature review, it became obvious that despite its importance in making the technology push process more efficient, there is no practical framework for uh, technology push um, innovations 
that exists that can concretely defines methods and tools to make it easier for practitioners to follow a technology push approach in real life. And this is what we wanted to overcome. Now, our focus uh, is the second row, and in particular, the three activities that comprise the TES step, as we call it. And I will actually explain to you why we focus on these three steps that I have here. Now, uh, the reason why is because TES is unique to technology push as market pool innovation starts with a fixed application area. The success of these three steps, of the success of the activities that you see is critical since it's been found that a poor match between technology functions, between what the technology can offer and its unique attributes and customer needs is a reason for many delays in technology commercialization. And TAS is also generalizable across uh, different fields of science. It is a front end innovation process uh, to design with the goal to design a value proposition on the basis of an invention. And this value proposition can then become, of course, the basis for an NTBF, a new technology based firm. The three activities are technology characterization, application identification, and application selection. And later on, I will also show you the um, tools that we have developed to support practitioners in following the process. But uh, for the people that may not be uh, familiar with the terms technology push and market pull, I would like to just as an introduction start uh, with that, since we are dealing with a technology push approach. So technology push is uh, the development and commercialization of a new technology-based product or service initiated by new technologies rather than customer needs. Uh, so a technology push innovation emerged from research. So it was not developed to fit a specific market need. Rather, it is actually uncertain um, whether there is going to be any demand at all for those technologies. But the result of a technology push strategy may become a radical innovation, may create a new market with high profit potential. On the other hand, market pool is development and market introduction of a new product or service induced by customer demand. So here, a, a market pool innovation um, is derived from emerging customer needs. In this case, uh, the needs the unsatisfied customer needs need to be identified first by conducting a customer survey, for example. And then a service or a product is designed, is developed uh, based on them so that uh, they can be, the market can be satisfied. So that's the difference between the two approaches. Uh, and I repeat that the TES framework comes under uh, the technology only the technology push approach. Now, for the first step, technology characterization, uh, the goal is that practitioners can gain an in-depth understanding for the technology in hand, the technology in question, and to support them in that, we have developed um, the technology canvas, the tool that you see here. Now, in order for a team, for practitioners to be able to find application ideas for a specific technology, information about the technology uh, needs to be gathered first. And this is uh, what we try to achieve using and filling out the technology canvas as a first step. The um, boxes, the six boxes of the technology canvas are inspired by the elements of a patent. And uh, the tool describes the most important information to characterize a new technological invention. And later on, of course, when I finish, we can go through it in detail if, um, if you want me to. The second step um, is application identification. And the application identification process is about generating new ideas. So possible applications for the technology in question. And more specifically, what needs to be done is a new technology market fit to be envisioned. 
And this includes identifying industries, identifying potential customers, and of course, uh, needs, unsatisfied customer needs at this point. And the, these needs have to be linked to the specific technology characteristics that have been identified during the first step. For the ideation process, um, how we have developed the process, that, how we have developed the framework is that the technology characteristics are first, first matched against complementary technologies from the Gartner hype cycle that I have on the left hand side and then against potential industries from, as an example, the ISIC4 taxonomy. So in reality, what uh, needs to be done is the technology in question first to be combined with a complementary technology from the Gartner hype cycle. And then um, so that practitioners then can ideate and can generate a multitude of possible applications that would emerge from the combination of the two technologies. And then as a second ideation anchor, as we, as we call it, as a second perspective that uh, practitioners can um, change so that they remain creative and focused during the ideation process, uh, they should try to envision the technology applied in a specific industrial field, like in manufacturing, for example. So what kind of applications could arise if uh, they, they would imagine the technology in question in a specific application domain? So um, the framework can be used, of course, as you can imagine, from researchers, from uh, innovation managers, from entrepreneurs, to foster the success of technology transfer workshops and innovation projects. And the objective is to enable practitioners to generate ideas about possible applications of a given technology, to then methodically evaluate them, evaluate the alternatives, and to select a small subset of them for detailed evaluation in the end. So as you can imagine, the results are documents that characterize the technology, so the filled out technology canvas, a list of potential applications after the second step is being followed, and in the end, an evaluated list of um, a selected uh, subset of applications um, that will emerge after following the task, the last step, which is application evaluation and inspection. Now, the multitude of ideas created by the divergent application identification phase has to be reduced to one or few candidate solutions in a convergent step, which is the third step of the TES framework. And this process, as I mentioned, is actually, uh, it consists of two parts. First, we have to evaluate the ideas so that we can then select the best ones. And practitioners will rate their ideas that emerged during the previous step based on five uh, defined criteria. So we have technical feasibility, market potential, profitability, team values fit. So whether the idea uh, is in agreement with the personal value of the team, but also whether the team has the right resources to um, realize an application like this, and of course, market entry. And in general, the evaluation of ideas is the final phase of the front end of innovation. And what would follow in modern thinking would be customer validation through an MVP, a minimal, a minimal viable product. So this would be uh, the next step in the evaluation iteration. And this is how the process looks now. This is how uh, we apply it in um, workshops until today and for the last uh, couple of years. And our goal is to further systematically evaluate it. Um, and just because I know uh, all of you are researchers, I decided to give you a glimpse on how we are planning to do that. So uh, since this, the study is not content, content with understanding 
the problems of following a technology push approach, but is seeking to develop an artifact that meets the identified need. Um, a design science approach is chosen. And this design science project stands in line with recent entrepreneurship research at the um, design science interface, such as the well-known business model canvas by Osterwalder. Um, and the framework that is chosen to be applied is the method framework for design science research by Johannes and Pezons. So we have explicated the problem. The problem is what I mentioned at the beginning that um, although uh, technology push innovations may create new markets with high, high profit potential, there is no actual methodology to support uh, practitioners in following a technology push approach. We have uh, defined the requirements, for example, as a reference, uh, the requirements for the first evaluation round of the technology canvas um, are the ones that you see here. So uh, it needs to support uh, practitioners in understanding the technology um, better. Uh, it needs to be easy to understand, easy to, to repeat and to offer a comprehensive perspective. We have designed and developed an artifact, the technology canvas. Um, as it is right now. We are able to demonstrate it because of the seminars that we are conducting at the KIT. And uh, the first round of evaluation is already over, but as I told you, the, our goal is to systematically evaluate it until uh, there are no changes uh, waiting to happen anymore. Um, and the evaluation strategy that is chosen, uh, that we have chosen is um, the human risk and effectiveness strategy. And the reasons for that are uh, diverse. But first of all, the major design risk in a framework like that is social or user oriented, meaning that the artifact is highly dependent on its usage by real people. Uh, second, it is feasible for us to evaluate it within, with real users in real context. And this is mainly because uh, we can evaluate the artifact within the course of our uh, workshops. And third, a critical goal of the evaluation is to rigorously establish that the utility and the benefit of the artifact are given in real situations. So the evaluation process focuses on naturalistic evaluation. Um, and of course, uh, the process, as I mentioned, ends with an evaluation where no new information is expected to be obtained from uh, further data. So for the next two steps for application identification and application selection, the requirements would be different. I mean, uh, only the requirements easy to understand and easy to repeat maybe um, would apply to all three steps. Um, and uh, what we are planning for the next months as well is that the ideas that have emerged during our workshops uh, applying the TAS approach will be rated from experts from the, the cultural startup scene and will be compared to ideas that were presented in workshops where the part participants did not, did not follow the TAS framework so that it can be identified whether more creative ideas result from following the TAS. So thank you uh, for your time. Uh, thank you for your attention. And of course, uh, you can let me know if you have any questions.